Acts chapter 8, if you will. And uh, we're going to look, we're just going to, for a point of about three minutes review, and then we'll move on with this. Uh, we were in this talking about Simon, who saw, uh, verse 14 through 25, Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 25, Simon saw the power of God, the Holy Spirit moving in the apostles. And he was amazed because he was a sorcerer. He did black magic, he did witchcraft and all like that. But when he saw, verse uh, 17 says, then they laid hands on him. He saw they were laying hands on him and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of hands of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. So Simon the sorcerer offered the apostles money because he wanted that same gift. He had a counterfeit gift of the Holy Spirit, but it was which is not of the Holy Spirit, but a counterfeit gift making it look like signs and wonders. And, but it wasn't the real thing. Now you say, well, how could it be a counterfeit of the Spirit? When the Bible talks about, in Thessalonians, I believe, uh, he talks about lying signs and wonders. So people can try to mimic the Holy Spirit. They can try to mimic or manipulate things that make it look like it's God. And if you're not discerning and if you don't have the Holy Spirit yourself, you will be fooled. Now, we're not going to call names or anything like that, but there's a lot of that now because with the proliferation of the internet, anybody can get online on Facebook Live and say, I'm this, I'm that. I just had one today, and I knew it was somebody spamming, but uh, 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 this, this online personality, and I was like, well, why is he at me today? And of course, he it hit me up on Messenger, and I said, hello. He said, hello, man of God. Hello. I said, there, I'm waiting for the punchline. And he went right in. Yes, can you send some money for the children in the orphanage in Africa that I'm doing? Okay. Spam. <laughs> But now, if I was not discerning to know that this total stranger who is on the internet saying he's a prophet, it was somebody, I'm assuming, we're going to assume that it was somebody impersonating him, okay? <laughs> Asking me for money and to sow into his ministry. He's like, wait a second. I don't even know who you are. But if you're caught in a moment where you're not led by the Spirit, you say, oh, you'll clip, you'll watch a couple of videos, you'll go to a meeting, say, oh my goodness, they, they, they do it more, we, we don't have this going on in my church. Let me, let me go over there and start following them. And you're following a counterfeit spirit. That's why you have to be careful going to every meeting that's in town. You go over there one night and it takes six months to get you right. Because you got involved in something that you weren't, you weren't discerning. So he wanted this. So verse 19 of Acts chapter 8, he said, give me this power also that I, that anyone on whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Now notice, he didn't ask for the Holy Spirit himself. He wanted the power or the ability to lay hands on other people so they could get the Holy Spirit. Hmm. I wonder sometimes if we want the gifts of God, not because we want to be you, but we want to be seen. Do we want the gifts of God because we want to be known as the person that's this, the person that's that, instead of, hey, whether anybody knows you or not, this is a gift from God. So he says here, he says here, give me this power also, so that I may, whom I may lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, it says there, but Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. And so then he, as we go on in the narrative, we find out that it was a heart issue where he wanted it because he was lifted up in pride, not because he wanted to be a conduit of the Spirit of God in the earth. Now, you have to ask yourself the question, when I ask for God to use me, what is the heart behind him wanting him to use me? And here's the thing about it. If you don't have the right heart, you shouldn't do it. Because now you're interfering with the move of God. 
Now you can be responsible for misleading a soul because even though they may have been touched by it, you have misled them. So we see here that he said, you have neither part nor portion in this matter, verse 21, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Somebody say it's a heart issue. Then he says, repent therefore of your wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. For our seed that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. So Peter saw what was really in his heart and in his soul. The man of God saw it. He was fooling everybody else because he looked like he could work signs and wonders. And many times we have people in church, not you, not your neighbor, but the other church down the street, that come to church faking it and they never going to make it. And what happens is they end up, he says, pray that the Lord forgive you because here's the first thing. What he's saying is that you'll get rid of the bitterness and the anger in your heart. Repent. A lot of times we ask God to do this for us or give me this, Lord. Or, I want this gift. I want this ability. But we have not repented for the stuff that's in us. See, see, we haven't repented. So before he could get the gift of the Holy Spirit, he had to repent for what was in his heart. Look what he says, the bitterness and bound by iniquity, the deep, dark sins. Then Simon answered and said, pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. So he was like, oh my goodness, please pray for me, help me. I don't want to be like this. Now, one of the things he saw that you must realize about the gift of the Holy Spirit or the anointing. As I told you, number one, the anointing empowers you to do things that you normally couldn't do in your own power. See, if you could do it in your own power and strength, you wouldn't need God. And that's part of the problem. We always do stuff ourselves and don't allow God to intervene. So you have to have the anointing. It empowers you to do more, something that you couldn't do. Now, here's what you got to be careful of because there's a flip side to that. When you're influenced by demonic spirits, you, those demonic spirits will have you do stuff that you could never do in your own power. Demons will have you, demonic spirits will have you saying stuff you wouldn't normally say. You ever see somebody who is demon-possessed and they get this strength out of nowhere? Oh, yeah, it's real. Look at somebody say, it's real. And so you must realize that you need to anoint it. Now, here's, here's where we're going with this because what we find out is, and I'm moving along here, is that the anointing, the anointing, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the anointing is attractive. It automatically by its nature attracts. That's why you have to be discerning, because if somebody has a fake anointing, they attract as well. Those who are discerning, not discerning. And so the anointing is attractive. The Holy Spirit is attractive. So it will draw people. But here's what I like. I, I notice one thing about God is God never forces anything on us. He gives us a choice. And I believe she was deceived by the serpent. Then she went to Adam. Adam had a choice whether or not to eat because she said eat because the word had already come forth. Don't eat of that one fruit of that tree. He had a, he had a choice. So because he had a choice, he made a choice and we're suffering right now for that choice. God, but so what happens is the God does not force himself on us. So when we ask for the Holy Spirit, there's a lot of different factors. See, again, what's important here is what's in your heart. Simon had missed God by whole line yards. What his heart, he saw what Philip was doing and teaching. It made sense. He felt like it'd be a good thing for him to become a Christian and have the gift of the Holy Spirit because it seemed like everybody else was doing it. 
But what Simon missed out on was that God was concerned about his verbal commitment only. He wasn't concerned about him being baptized. He wasn't concerned about how many times he went to church. No, God was concerned with what was in Simon's heart. And so when you find out what's in your heart, then you can ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit when you clear that stuff out. See, making a commitment to Christ is a serious thing. It's more than a religion. The old Baptist used to say, have you got good religion? Well, you can have the best religion, but you're still going to hell if you don't have Christ in your heart. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And so religion is just going through the motions. Not being authentic. It's about relationship. Uh, a relationship with the true and the living God through Christ Jesus. If you haven't made that commitment and you don't have that relationship and you feel like you're going through the motions, you can get it right. So then you can ask God, give me the gift of your Holy Spirit. Now, let's talk about some of these gifts. Number one, we, we probably this will pause all we get tonight. One of the gifts of the Spirit that you can have is prophecy. Somebody say prophecy. All right, let's go there. Let's go to Romans 12. Romans 12. Let's see what it says here. Romans 12. Let's look at verse 6. There we there. All right, it says there. Romans 12 and 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Somebody say, use your gift. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts, verse 8 says, in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Verse 9 says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to that which is good. Verse 10, be, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, phileo, in honor, giving preference to one another. That's one of the gifts, prophecy. Now, let, let's... Let's break this down because some people get this confused. Prophecy in its core of the word means the, the testimony of Christ. It means the ability to receive and proclaim a message from God. Now, this could involve foretelling of future events. Though its primary purpose is seen in the blessings of foretelling. One who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, and consolation. Which means you can have the gift of prophecy, but it doesn't mean you're prophesying. Did you get that? Because prophecy is, again, you may have the gift to foretell, but it also is something that's said to strengthen, encourage, and console. Sometimes you got to prophesy to yourself. <laughs> listen, listen. I, I, I posted a video, some of you may have seen it. I was in the cemetery, and I was on the golf cart, and we had roads going through it. And I ran, there was a, this is really, when God gave me a revelation today. There was a grasshopper crossing the street. And I was going so fast in the car, this before the race, I was just going, boy. And I went right over the center, right over the grasshopper. I didn't, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. But I could have just buried him right there, but I didn't. And so when I realized, well, this nice, beautiful, big, big mother, uh, uh, caterpillar. No, grasshopper. One of them. Grasshopper. So when I realized it, I turned around, and I stopped, and he was just, he shriveled up right there in the middle of the road. So I pulled my phone out, and I just started video. And I backed away to see what he was going to do. And after about a couple minutes, this when he realized nobody was around, no golf carts coming through, no cars, he started and kept going until he got to the other side of the road, to the grass. 
And the Holy Ghost spoke to me like I'm sitting talking to you, saying, no matter what's happening, just keep on going. He did not let me almost running him over stop him. He wanted to get to that grass. <laughs> that was deep for me. Listen, that blessed me all day. And so, let, let me say, so what happens is I had, I immediately, I write out, I'm outside and, 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 and I cut a video and post it, say, no matter what, keep going. I had to prophesy to myself. I had to encourage myself. The Bible says in verse 36, verse 1 Samuel 36, it said, David, they talked to stone of David. They talked to, they burnt the city down. They took their wives and children captive. And everybody turned on David to blame him. But it said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Oh, bless his name. And so sometimes you got to give a prophecy to yourself. But then the gift, the gift, the gift provides a word from God to a specific group. That's not the normative word of God to believers. Now, it's a gift. Now, you can have the gift of prophecy where God will show you things and then you speak it. But you could also, there's also the gift of speaking in tongues. All right? Are you with me? And so even with speaking in tongues, the Bible says that what happens is that is to edify who? When you speak in tongues. When I speak in, speak in tongues, I'm speaking to God. Are you with me? When I get a word of knowledge, I speak in tongues and I pray, and I get a word of knowledge, then I can prophesy to the people. There may be an interpretation, but here's what you got to know for all you that want to be prophets. 95% of the stuff the Lord tell you, you ain't never supposed to say a word. Because you're supposed to pray. And in a seed, instead of stopping people in the parking lot, the Lord told me to tell you, no, be quiet. Just go and pray. And so it's a gift. Now, here's the thing about it. We see, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further in Romans. It talked about all these different gifts. Now, let's go over to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. I'm almost done here. 1 Corinthians 12. Let's go here. Let's go to verse, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. We'll start there. Mark these down. You can study these later. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So you, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit or the manifestation of the Spirit. It's not just for you. It's for the manifestation for all. For one, for to one is given the word of wisdom. Through the Spirit. That's where the Spirit speaks to you, tells you things that you wouldn't normally know or be smart enough to know. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different types of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributed to each one individually as he wills. So each one of us can have the gift of the Spirit, but it would manifest in a different way. Some people have all of them, it seems like. You may only have one. But the issue is, what do you do? It's not for you. So you got to be careful because see somebody hear this on the Internet, and then they'll go and say, yeah, Pastor Robert said, I'm a prophet. And get them some business card in the briefcase. And say, the Lord told me, no, 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 that's you. And so what happens is, it's a gift. That's why I said in Romans 12, he gives the gift for you to use it. Nudge your neighbor and say, what gift are you using? See, we sit in church and we want God to give us all this stuff, and then we get it. And we use it for self-aggrandizement. We use it for self-promotion, or we don't, or we don't use it at all. Now, here's the thing about it. It's a gift. So if you don't want to speak a tongue, don't, don't worry about it. If somebody, you should, but they don't, they don't. They, there's, somebody that's, there's some people that speak in tongues all the time, and God bless them. This one gospel, Donnie McClurkin, I love him. Donnie, Donnie doesn't care where he is. 
He could be on BET, MTV, <laughs> but now they break out the tongue. That's it. It's over. And sometimes you see them, they try to edit it out, but sometimes you just can't get it out of <laughs> But now there's some, look at this, there's some that when they have the gift, it's a work in the miracles. Maybe your gift is just when you go to pray for folk, folk get healed. Maybe, maybe when, when you say something, you know, there's some people that have the gift of just knowing the right thing to say at the right time for you. The gift of encouragement. So what happens is, it's a gift that you can ask God to give to you. Notice it says here, some people have the gift of discerning of spirits. They can see what spirit operating in you coming down the road. But the well, thing about it, but you can tell when they're mature, because they don't all the time say something to you. They just say, yeah, I better pray for them. Huh? We talk about fake news, we got fake spirits. <laughs> and you think because nobody's saying that, everybody's smiling, that you got everybody fooled. But the Lord sees you. There's people that have the gift of discernment. So can somebody say, watch out. Another different of kinds of tongues. And another, the interpretation of tongues. But here's the thing that you must realize. It's a gift that God wants to give to you so you can use it. Everybody always in church says, I want the Lord to use me. I want the Lord to use me. Well, this is your opportunity. Repent. Clean your heart out. Get rid of the bitterness. Get rid of the anger. And say, Lord, give me the gift. Bless me with the gift of your Holy Spirit. And you'll be surprised that God, when your heart is right, will rest it on you, put it inside you. Let me tell you something. When Dr. Mark, I'm done. Let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit is in you, whatever gift it is, it changes who you are. When you've got the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will lead you. You begin to pray more. You begin to read the Word more. And the more you read the Word, the more you pray, and the more discernment you get. Let me tell you something. Some of you may have issues with people or whatever. And they may attack you or do something, or maybe they didn't do that to you, but you just think they did. Hello. <laughs> and your first reaction is, I'm going to get them. But when you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is kind. The Holy Spirit is loving. The Holy Spirit is gentle. So, even when you may be hurt, you may be angry, you may be confused, you may be frustrated, but when you have the gift of the Holy Spirit in you, instead of cussing them out, you'll open your mouth and bless them. Oh, shame out that emotion. Let me say something. Eh, eh, look, so, somebody, somebody, not, not nobody here, not nobody here, somebody said some just mean, just mean, nasty stuff to me one time. And I was like, it was so random, I was just like, <laughs> but the devil know how to do, because even though they weren't really in my world, it, it, that's why I was so ready, just caught me off guard. So then you start, now, 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 listen, we all usually rehearse what we're going to say before we say it. If you're going to talk that, okay, man, I'm going I'm to I'm say that. Or we say it to ourselves. Or oh, you wait till I see them. You wait. I'm, 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 and with that person, I, I, yeah, mm hmm. I said, leave me alone now. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm warning you. And I was already, I was God be my witness. I was already ready for them. And they came back at me again. And I sat there. I 
Daniel. And I closed my eyes. I said, Holy Spirit, help me right now. And they went on and finally when they came in for air, I went to talk and I started speaking in tongues. And they looked at me like, what? No. I don't know what I said in the spirit, but I know it wasn't cussing. <laughs> and they ended up having to apologize. Because they said I wasn't even in the right spirit. I was, I, I, yeah, yeah. You was about to take me out. But we can't let nobody do that. But the Holy Spirit, if you allow him, will even bridle your tongue. It'll tell you, don't say that. Don't say, I know you want to say, don't say it. Oh, God help me. Because guess what? Whatever reason they were doing saying what they're saying, if I would have come back, then I could have damaged them. Then you would have had two hurt people. If both of us say we children of God and we were out here fussing and cussing with each other. So we got the Holy Ghost. I can't tell. And so what we have to realize, Brother Gary, is that we have to sit here and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. When I was growing up, we used to, the old Pentecostal, they used to make you come to the altar or get on the bench. And they used to call it tarrying and seeking and all that. And you'd be down there for 30 minutes or an hour and people love you. Call on Jesus. Come on. <laughs> and then you think you got something. They said, come on back tomorrow night. <laughs> you ain't got it yet. And, and, and there was an understanding there. But here's the thing about it. It doesn't even necessarily take all of that. I'm not discounting it. But thank God. Thank God. Thank God. For some of them old ways. We need some of them old ways now. But here's the thing about it. All you have to do is open your heart and ask God for the gift. And it may not happen like that, but when you when you make that your prayer every morning, every day, you'll find yourself, you start start seeing the Holy Spirit moving in you. You start seeing the Holy Spirit moving and speaking through you. You'll see the gift of God being manifest. Everybody standing. We're gonna stop there. We're talking about prophecy. Prophecy. A word of encouragement, a word of consolation. Prophecy isn't just you're going to get a car in three days. Prophecy isn't just you're, you're going to get a check in the mail. I thank God for that. But before you go out and get happy about prophesy, prophecy and prophesying, understand something. Every prophetic word you get before it comes to pass, you're going to be tried. Woo, Jesus. I, 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 hear, hear my spirit when I say this. When somebody calls me out and says they got a word for me, I'm like, oh, God, I'm getting ready to go through something now. Oh, it's wonderful what they tell you, but you're getting ready to go through before it comes to pass. Or you get it, and then all the devil's right there waiting. So, but you can have the gift of prophecy. You can have the gift of discernment. Lift those hands all over this building, Dr. Mark, please. Just open your heart to the Lord. First of all, Repent for whatever's in you. Say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Wash me, make me whole. Purge me with hyssop that I may be clean. Wash me whiter than snow. And then, as you repent of your confess your sins, whatever the gift is, the Holy Spirit that you desire, whatever the gift is that you want. And if you don't know, that's good. Just say, Lord, give me the gift of your Holy Spirit. It may not be the gift of speaking in tongues, but if you have the Holy Spirit manifesting the gift, it will manifest in your life for all to see. Come on, pray to him right now. Just for these next few fleeting moments, God wants to fill you with the Spirit. God wants to pour down his spirit on you. When he pours down his spirit on you, your atmosphere will change. You'll see things clearer. Your home will begin to change. 
The way you think about things will begin to change. Thank you, Holy Spirit.